Welcome everybody. We're here with Dr. Villarreal and his practice is called Biodental Healing in Thousand Oaks, California. And I've known Dr. Villarreal for more than uh, 25 years and uh, I've gotten to know his practice and the way he works. He's uh, also an author and he has his own dental products called Estrella. They're quite amazing. I use them with my family. And the, the most exciting thing about Dr. Villarreal is he's just a really good personable family dentist and he's got a background in cosmetic dentistry and he knows he's one of the best biological dentists I know in the world today. And so we're just really, really honored to have you here today, David. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of my most exciting subjects to talk about because I get so many parents who come to me and say, you know, we tried IVF and we tried all these different things and we spent $80,000 and then they go to someone like you and, and you treat them and go, oh, just had a gum infection, tooth infection, you know, boom, they, they get pregnant. I mean... How does that happen? I mean, tell me more about that. You know, it's interesting. Um, I've been in practice for 30 years now, and I went to a very conventional dental school, USC. Mm -hmm. And um, seven years out of being a dentist, I just said, oh, my God, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. I'm going to drill and fill. I studied all these years to do this. And, you know, God is great. The universe is great. Um, someone came to me, and um, I was already in interested in uh, doing uh, cosmetic dentistry and she didn't have any fillings she didn't have any um, silver fillings or what we consider call amalgams and I said wow you don't have any any silver fillings she, and she said oh I went to Dr. Hal Huggins in Colorado Springs I go who so she came back the next day right and she came with um, her husband then and I looked at looked at him and he was actually she's actually was married to Captain Steubing of the Love Boat mm. And so she brought me Dr. Hal Huggins' book, It's All in Your Head. I could not put that book down. Next thing I know, I was flying to Colorado Springs and uh, took Dr. Huggins' uh, first course, went back the next month, took the advanced course, and never looked back. Mm -hmm. And back then in the early 90s, they were coming after us, mm -hmm. dentists who weren't poisoning people, basically. I remember those days. Yeah. Not putting amalgams yeah. in, right? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't turn my couldn't turn my back. There was just so much information, uh, mostly again from Europe. Um, and so as I started to, to practice mercury-free dentist, dentistry um, using Hal Huggins' uh, protocols, I never really understood the whole thing about the pregnancy thing. So in like my first 10 years of doing this, I had like a handful of, of, of women come to me after removing their mercury fillings. They just wanted their mercury fillings out. They would come to me and they said, we weren't even trying to get pregnant because we gave up. Mm. And all of a sudden, they removed the mercury fillings out and guess what? They got pregnant. So I was like, wow, this, this, this is really true. And so then I started doing more and more studies about you know, how mercury and amalgam affects not just the female, but the male sperm. Mm -hmm. And so they don't really look at the male part of getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. it, they kind of like just forget about that. Very important. So, you know, I always, if, if somebody really wants to get pregnant and mm -hmm. have a healthy baby, mm -hmm. I really recommend mm -hmm. that they both, the husband and wife, get rid of gum disease mm -hmm. and get rid of any heavy metals in the mouth um, a year before mm -hmm. conception. Okay. So that's, that's a little I, short story about, <clears throat> about that. I couldn't agree more. Uh, David and um, like also we were talking about this before how you know a lot of people will hear that they have a mercury amalgam problem and they want to get them out and they go to a dentist and they get even sicker because the dentist isn't properly trained can you talk a little bit about that how why that's so important as well very much so um, for example in our practice mm -hmm. um, well if, if a patient should really educate themselves before they choose the dentist and ask certain questions. For example, um, do you have an ionizer in the room? Okay, because when you're drilling this out, you're gonna get free radicals of mercury. You want that ionizer to pick it up. Do they have a special suction that looks like the trunk, trunk of an elephant? Okay, do they use a rubber dam to isolate the areas? Okay, do, are they completely draped? 
okay, um, are they using intravenous vitamin C? That is huge. Not many practices use that. I have a naturopath um, next door to me who actually um, does that for me. Because you want the vitamin C to help in chelating, but it also helps in removing free radicals. It's an electron donor, whereas heavy, mercury and other heavy metals are electron scavengers. They just steal them. So you want something in that to help do that. There's also um, something called sequential removal. And this was taught to me by Dr. Hal Huggins. You have a mercury filling, which is dissimilar metals with 50% mercury, mm -hmm. in a base of water, which is saliva. Mm -hmm. Okay, So if you go and touch it with a, uh, this electrical probe, this little voltage machine, it'll give you a, a discharge like the flash of a camera. So what Dr. Hal Huggins found out is if you remove the highest negative charges first, or that quadrant, the patient does better. Mm. Okay, So there's all these little... That's interesting. Little interesting uh, things that we follow uh -huh. um, to help the patient mm -hmm. not get sick. So you use a probe to, to check on which teeth are which teeth which teeth are, are which which teeth are releasing more mercury. Interesting. Okay. Or, for example, a lot of people don't understand that there's porcelain, their porcelain crowns have metal underneath them. Because mm -hmm. they say, "Oh, no, I don't have any mercury fillings. I have metal. Mm -hmm. I, I have porcelain." Sorry. Right. So you go to touch the, the metal of that porcelain, mm -hmm. and you'll get a discharge. Most of the time, it's negative charge because it's nickel-based. Mm. Okay, so you got mercury as the worst metal on the planet. The next, right next, right below it is nickel. Mm. Nickel is carcinogenic. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it it uh, damages cell membranes. Right? Yes, very much so. Mm. The other problem, and let's say they say, well, I have this gold crown. Mm -hmm. I don't have any mercury. Mm -hmm. Gold in itself is too soft, mm -hmm. so they have to mix it with different metals to make it stronger. You can give the patient the look of gold and it can the gold can range from 20 percent up to 90. Mm. okay so there's they'll put cadmium in it palladium iridium really? silver I didn't know that. yes wow. all these things okay the pro like in germany they have banned gold they have banned gold mm. alloy that has mm. palladium mm. because they have found a lot of people allergic to the palladium mm. so sometimes the gold crown will test negative and it may be a good gold crown but there's mercury underneath because the way, the way they taught us in school, when someone needs a crown, it's got a big filling, right? So they teach us to drill it down to a thimble mm -hmm. and leave the mercury filling as a base. So you're covering the mercury vapors. they got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. they actually, there was a study done in the 70s in Germany where it actually comes out through the roots into the limb system at a concentration 1,200 times more. 1,200 times 1,200 times more. Wow. So it's actually worse to have that covered. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we explain all this to the patients. And the other thing is, you know, they'll go to a dentist. Dentist will say, okay, I'll take your mercury fillings out. And they don't, the, the patient doesn't understand not all materials or all white materials are created equally. Mm -hmm. So we really recommend our, our patients to do a, what we call a blood compatibility test. There's nothing in dentistry that's non-toxic. Okay, so the terminology holistic yeah, I, I like to use more biological dentistry mm -hmm. because what we're trying to do is use a material that is the least reactive to your immune system. So then your immune system can go work somewhere else mm -hmm. and help heal whatever other parts of your body that are ailing. Um, so in, the, in these uh, reports, there's hundreds and thousands of materials, not just the white fillings. It's the bonding agents that we use. It's the cements that we use to cement the crowns. It's the crown materials. It's the impression materials. So it breaks down all these materials um, via your whatever your blood shows up. It's as highly reactive, moderately reactive, and least reactive. So we always use the materials that are the least reactive. Mm. Again, not to, to help, not to help, not mm. affect your immune system as much. So how do you test for biocompatibility? What do you the, use? There's well, there's a, a blood. Uh, there's a lab. Actually, Dr. Hal Huggins started it in Colorado Springs. Now um, his protege, Dr. Groovy, my dear friend, um, is taking it over. Mm -hmm. So there's a kit we give to the patient. They go to a blood drawing uh, lab. Then they send it to Colorado Springs. In a week, we get back the report. Then we go over with the patient. Okay, we highlight that we're going to use this, this, and this, and this material. And so that's, that's basically it. Got it. Now, when someone gets a root canal, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Because a lot of people do these things. Or they get implants, which are mm -hmm. kind of similar in some ways. This mm -hmm. is very popular these days because 
I mean, people don't want to look like they have no teeth, you know, and mm -hmm. so, you know, in a, uh, but can you talk about what we know about the kind of, kind of really virulent pathogens that live underneath these root canals? Oh boy, this is, that, this is a touchy subject. Um, Western, Dr. Weston Price, back in the early 1900s, a big pioneer in the whole mercury-free movement, nutrition, all this stuff, right? What happened to him was he did a root canal on his son. His son, mm. a little while after the root canal, died of a heart attack. Wow. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was his son. Wow, that's what got him motivated. Huh? So what he did was before they buried his son, he extracted that root canal tooth wow. and put it under the skin of a rabbit. Mm. Within a few days, that rabbit died of a heart attack. He put it in 200 rabbits. Mm. They all died of heart attacks. So he understood that there are... And, you know, we send, we send some of these root canal teeth to uh, Dr. Huggins' uh, DNA lab. Mm. I can't even pronounce the bacteria that is found in those. Mm. Okay? What Western medicine doesn't understand is that the tooth is a live organ. Mm. It, you know, it has nerve and blood supply to it. It's got fluids going in and out all the time. Mm. When you take the nerve out, when people, the, the, you know, when people say, oh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a root. It's like, they, no, they still have the root. Mm -hmm. It's the, the nerve in the root that was removed. Mm. Okay? So, you know, they clean it out and they fill it up with the rubber material. Mm. One of the problems with the rubber material is it's orange. The reason it's orange is because they put barium in it. Mm, so it can show up in an x-ray. Mm. Okay, so now you're dealing with barium, right? But the problem is, is they'll fill the, the canal vertically, okay? The length of the root, blah, blah, blah. But there's all these little lateral accessory canals mm -hmm. that the bugs are still there, mm. okay? And so those little bugs go out to what we call the periodontal ligament, which is like the ligament that supports your tooth to your bone. So all of that little bacteria is sitting around there and traveling all over your body. So they can never completely sterilize a root canal tooth. Now they'll say, well, they'll look at a two-dimensional x-ray and they say, well, there's nothing wrong with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, But you're looking at a two-dimensional x-ray diagnosed in a, a three-dimensional object with a two-dimensional x-ray. You don't know what's going on there. Mm. There are many times that I've extracted a root canal tooth. There's The two-dimensional x-ray looks great. Mm -hmm. There's always a lesion underneath. Interesting. I always wondered about that. Yeah, because sometimes people will say, "Look, I have a. I know something's wrong with my tooth." They go to the dentist, and I said, "The dentist says everything looks okay." But mm -hmm. well, you're saying that that's because of you can't see everything from this whole three-dimensional point of view. You can't see it with, with an X radiographically, or with um, until you extract the tooth, send it to a lab like the mm -hmm. DNA lab, mm -hmm. and see actually what bacteria is actually involved there. So again. You know, people don't want to lose their teeth, and I understand that. Um, but then again, where is that tooth in relation to your meridians, which is your Chinese energetic pathways? Okay, mm. um, Western medicine decapitated you. Mm. They put the dentist over here. You got the physician over here, right? Right. But you understand that Chinese medicine has been around thousands of years. They understand the body much better. So they understand that we're basically a computer board. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got all this chi energy, right? So yeah, they understand that the head's connected to the body. So what Vol did back in the 50s, a German scientist, he correlated using the meridians each tooth to different organs in your body. Mm. So when I got into this in, in 92, I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. You know, I was just, I it was totally into, yeah, let's get mercury out. You know, I saw the Swedish studies and all that. And I'm like, okay, no more mercury. Mm. But then I was just, I, you know, I start little by little. I started like, okay, I'll take this, this, you know, extract this tooth, or hmm. you know, take this crown off or this, and I would follow the meridian path. And then I would ask my patients, "Hey, mm -hmm. did this area clear up?" And they're like, "Yeah, th what's going on with that?" So then I really started believing, yeah, yeah. this each tooth is related to different organs in your body. Mm -hmm. So um, that being said, you know, you have these root canal teeth. Mm -hmm. Um, and people come in and they say, you know, I have this problem, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll take the tooth out, they'll get better, sometimes they won't. Mm. But there's a big factor in this. It's, it's, it's a whole different paradigm shift in that 
I try to teach my patients is they need to become responsible for their health. Mm. Okay? Very good point. The American yeah. people want a pill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, give me a pill for this. Give me a pill. They don't want it re responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll sit down a patient, whether it's removal of mercury fillings, whether it's dealing with their gum disease, whether it's dealing with crowns, root canals. There's never a guarantee what I'm going to do is going to improve their health. Mm -hmm. I tell them that what I do is help them improve their immune system, but it's up to them, you know, to follow up with proper diet, mm -hmm. uh, emotional changes, um, environmental changes. All these things play a huge role in, in, their, in their overall health. Mm -hmm. We're just a piece of the puzzle. What I'm trying to do is not suppress their immune system as much. I want to help them improve their immune system. Right. So the whole root canal issue is, is, is a big controversy. Um, does it help? It doesn't help. Each, per, each individual is different. Going to answer your question about implants. Uh, you got the titanium implants. Everyone's titanium. Everyone's implant happy now. Okay. Yeah, you extract a root canal tooth or a bad tooth and you put an implant in. It's not going to decay. It's not going to um, have any uh, tooth pain, any of that stuff. What I did notice... Dr. Bell, mm -hmm. we're going to take a break and oh, then sure. we're going to come right back. Okay. So um, and what we see in dentistry now is uh, everyone's implant happy. Um, people don't want to deal with possible pain or uh, failure of a root canal tooth. So they'll extract it and put an implant in. Back in the early, you know, like a year 2000 and something like that, um, I started doing some research with um, implants. And I found a study in Germany that found that they were finding titanium in the lymph nodes of patients with implants. Mm. So I uh, asked Dr. Huggins about it. And he goes, oh, no, no implants. Forget the implants. So I started doing more and more research. And... Some of my patients wanted implants, and they already had autoimmune diseases. So I would, you know, I never tell a patient what they should or shouldn't do. My education, my, my responsibility is educating the patient and allowing them to decide. And they'll go, well, what would you do? I said, no, you have to go in within yourself and intuitive, intuitively decide what's best for you. But you need to educate yourself on the pros and cons of everything. Um, it's not like when my parents... Where, you know, when they were, you know, they'd go to the doctor in the 60s or 70s, whatever, and they'd say, oh, the doctor said to do this. I go, do you want to, you should get a second opinion. Oh, no, no, he, he's right. I mean, mm. no one ever questioned it. Yeah. Now, because of the internet, you know, it, it, I think it's helped a lot of people because they get to see the pros and cons of what, you know, what's the best step for them to improve their health. So, you know, I never really um, did implant. I don't do implants in my practice. Uh, but some patients want them. So I had gone to this international uh, conference in Century City, not knowing really what it was going to be about. And it was all uh, European and Japanese uh, speakers, dentists. And it was all about the zirconia implant. And I'm like, what? Hmm. You know, and the success they were having in Europe. So, you know, people say, oh, no, it's a zirconium implant. No, it's zirconia. It's, ext it's, it's extracted from the zirconium, but it's a non-metal implant. Mm. Okay? So, going back to the meridians, okay? Now, is zirconia like a diamond-like? Exactly. Of? Exactly like that. Mm. So, you're going to implant this into, into the jawbone, mm. okay? The problem with implants now, you look in the LA Times and you'll see... Get an implant and a crown for seven hundred something dollars. Mm. Who knows where that titanium mm. implant is coming from? I'm sure most of them are from China. Who mm. knows who controls all that, right? Mm. So you're putting these titanium implants in the jawbone. You're going to get a blockage of that meridian, that energy, that chi is going to be blocked. What I have found, speaking to certain naturopaths that do energy testing, they found that the zirconia kind of short circuits. Mm along that but you still get energy flowing mm -hmm. now, I don't completely understand that mm -hmm. but that's what they that's what they tell me so I'll have you know if a patient's really insistent about having an implant I'll have them test get tested energetically to see 
if the titanium is better or the zirconia. And sometimes it's the zirconia, the titanium is better than the zirconia. Again, it's what is what is best for your body. It's not the same for everybody else. Mm-hmm. And so people really need to understand that <clears throat> because you know, going back to the biocompatibility stuff, mm-hmm. the dentist will use a composite that he's used to, or he went to a dental course and they promoted this pro- this product. They're going to use that one. Okay. Uh, I hate to say this, but what's happening in dentistry today is what's ha- what is what has happened to the pharmacists. Okay, it is becoming corporate dentistry now. There are corporations. There's one out here in Orange County. They're based out in Newport Beach. I won't mention their name, but they have basically McDonaldized dentistry. They're all over the place, and they look like private practices, but. What's happened is these young dentists are coming out of dental school. It's, they're, being, they're in so, so much debt that they can't afford to buy a practice. So they basically partner up with these corporations, and corporations run them, of course. And it's all about do as much as you can, um, try to upsell, blah, 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 blah. So they're not concerned about biocompatibility. They're not concerned about remo- proper removal of metals, you know, all this stuff. So, again... Is their price point lower in general? Or their price point tends to be, it does tend to be lower, mm. but a lot of these try to upsell, so they end up spending more money than mm. they thought they would have, okay? So um, I don't think that dentistry, we're going to see a big change in the, the people. I think we're, we're going to see a bigger separation of practices like mine mm. and corporate dentistry. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna see a big shift, and the people that are more conscious or much more awake or more responsible for their health are gonna go towards practices like mine. But the majority are gonna stay in mainstream. Um, so again, I don't I can't see how unless you know we get more and more dentists like myself to speak up and to educate, and that's my responsibility. My responsibility along with my, my dear friend, Dr. Blanche Gruby, and some of our other partners um, who we've been uh, with Dr. Huggins for many, many years, is, is educating and mm. trying to get some of these young dentists to understand mm. their responsibility. Because we got into this, to, I got into this to help people, mm. to help heal people, to, to get them better, you know, physically. You know, and that's why I said in the first seven years, I was like, oh, it's just all about cosmetics and drill and fill and just get them in and get them out and take care of decay but it's not it's it's mm. it's about helping them heal heal physically emotionally mentally mentally spiritually it's very good and I, I i like that about your practice is you really talk to the patient about their whole life uh, mm-hmm. not just the physical mechanics of get, fixing the teeth and you know when i've referred people to you you people always come back really happy saying oh he's a really amazing personable you know likable guy and I really trust him, you know, that people always say, I really trust oh, good. Dr. Villarreal. And, um, you know, back to what you're saying about the, the tooth and, you know, the pathogens that live under the tooth, too. You know, I, I think Dr. Huggins identified, like, some things like leprosy, like these, yeah. these horrible, like, pathogens that you, like, had these huge, long names you can't remember, right? Yeah. And uh, I remember being with, you remember Dr. Gene Meyer? He's, he's passed, mm-hmm. uh, but I remember being in his office, and I was there to see him, and uh, I remember... Uh, that he said, Roy, you're going to want to come and see this. And it was a patient going into cardiac arrest. And he says, no, watch. And he pulled the tooth out. And in that very moment, he pulled the tooth out. Stopped. The cardiac arrest stopped. And he says, that's what we're talking about. And I was like, it's the first time I actually saw that live. And I'm like, it was very powerful for me because he had told me about this. And I heard it. But, you know, sometimes you think, well, maybe they're exaggerating a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it was it was so dramatic and right there. I mean, you must have seen some cases like that where you. I see it every week. Yeah, I see it every week. Um, I'll have patients come in for what we call full revisions, mm-hmm. and it's not just removal of the mercury fillings or mm-hmm. the mercury fillings in the metal crowns. Uh, sometimes, uh, if in, you know, if the patient wants, it's removal of the root canal teeth. But an, another big factor is what we call cavitations. Mm-hmm. Okay, and people don't understand what cavitations are. Usually, they're in the wisdom teeth areas. Mm. Um, the problem is, is the way we were taught in school, when you extract a tooth, is 
once you extract it, use a hand instrument to clean the socket out, okay? And then suture it up. Mostly now they're scraping it open and putting in cadaver bone. Well, Dr. Huggins' lab, uh, Dr. Gruby gave Dr. Huggins the most expensive um, cadaver bone. Dr. Huggins tested in his DNA lab and one of his last lectures that he had with us, his, his elite dentist, it blew my mind. There were uh, over 24 different bacteria in the so-called sterilized mm. bone. Mm. But no one, no one thinks about, what about the DNA? Right? Mm -hmm. Your bones has your DNA, right? It has your energy. You know, you hear these stories where people get heart implants or certain organ implants and all of a sudden they become a smoker. Mm. Or, you know, mm. their personality changes. Mm. Because every part of your body has memory. Mm. And so, you know, and they're just putting these cadaver bones like crazy. Mm. So they'll even put cadaver bone or they'll put um, bovine bone or shark mm. Or plastics. I like the way how you look at this holistic, complete person. Like what you're saying, there's a that it, yeah, like uh, it causes people to think, and, which is always a good thing because if they can't think, they can't make a choice uh, because they don't have that distinction, right? Right. And and like uh, what you were saying is kind of common sense. Like okay, putting somebody else's DNA into your bone, it doesn't really. It's not going to match. I mean, it's just. Right. It, you just talked about the histocompatibility by itself is yep. a problem. Mm -hmm. It's not just the pathogens, which is where all the focus is on. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, ba back to what we were talking about before also. Um, <clears throat> I remember being at, uh, we were at Dr. Huggins' lecture together, mm -hmm. and it was the first time I had learned uh, that back in 75, that dentists added copper to the mercury amalgam fillings, mm -hmm. and that caused a huge problem. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, they were, they were trying to lower the amount of mercury in the amalgam. Mm. Um, and what people need to understand is everyone calls it a silver filling because it looks silver, right? Mm. In actuality, it's only 16% silver. The other uh, percentages make up 50% of it is copper, tin, and zinc. And, the, and then there's 50% mercury. So they reduced the amount of mercury and added a little more copper. What we found out was increased mercury to come out of those fillings 50 times more. 50 times? 50 times. Wow. wow. So if you're going to have a mercury amalgam filling, mm. it's mm. better to be old and have them mm. when, they were, when you were a kid than these, these poor generations now that are having these high copper, mm. high copper amalgams. Now, what's interesting is Koch Company mm. um, is a, a major manufacturer of an amalgam called Dispersaloy. Mm. They, even in their package, have the contraindications of when not of not to use them. One of them is if you're pregnant. One of them if you're six years or younger. The other one, of course, is if you have an allergy to mercury. What? Do you have an allergy to mercury? I don't think I have an allergy. Do you have an allergy to mercury, right? If you have <laughs> kidney failure yeah. or any kidney problems, hmm. right? Because where does mercury go? Yeah. One of the areas of the organs is the kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. So they even state that. Proposition hmm. 65 in California makes us state what's ingredients in everything, right? They even state that mercury is a neurotoxin. Mercury can cause birth defects, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So why are we turning our backs to all this? Mm -hmm. right. holistic, bio holistic biological dentistry mm -hmm. is all common sense. Right. It is common sense, right? Yeah. It is common sense. Well, so, so, and then that whole aspect, like what Hal was talking about, with the, I, I remember I got my first mercury amalgams in '75. It was because my, I think now it was because I had been a vegetarian for about a year. It was like I think it was '76, '75, '76, and um, and I remember uh, him in the lecture that night saying, uh, you know, actually when I was talking to him, he says, "Well, did you, um, you know, when did your eyes go bad?" And I said, '76. Uh, <laughs> I said he said like when. I said, well, I remember I was in a chemistry class, and it was about, uh, he said, but how, did you have any mercury fillings before that? And I said, yeah, actually about a year before. I said, I remember being in a chemistry class, and I couldn't see the board anymore. And he says, that's, that's, what, that's what it was. It was the mercury fillings. Mm -hmm. I said, really? I never knew that. Yeah. 
It was sounds like a really interesting distinction. Every time I talk to you or how I always get these new, you know, aha moments. It's really cool. Well, yeah, that's one thing that Hal taught me. He goes, when you're interviewing your mm -hmm. new patient mm -hmm. and they come with an autoimmune disease or mm -hmm. some other health problems, you always ask them, mm -hmm. when was your last dental visit and what was done? Mm -hmm. Again, uh -huh. the head's connected to the body. Well, now let's talk about vegetarianism. It's 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 a oh. very not politically correct uh, subject in California, especially. But look, I mean, we both uh, agree that ecologically and spiritually and morally, it's a, it's a great thing to not want to kill right. animals. And, uh, you know, we all went through our vegetarian phases. I know I did for a long time, probably too long. And um, but But, you know, it, it, what happens when... When someone becomes a vegetarian, to uh, to the teeth. I, what I've noticed is that a lot of their teeth fall apart. What I've seen in the hair samples is that they usually have low phosphorus uh, when they become vegetarian because they don't have the bioavailable protein absorption going on. What is your take on this uh, and vegetarianism and dentistry uh, and veganism too? It's more obvious, probably there. Yeah, it's definitely more obvious in veganism. Um, my patients tend not to heal as quickly. Mm. They don't have that protein. We can take a break. Yeah. Right come right back. So here we are back with Dr. Villarreal, and we're going to talk now about vegetarianism and veganism and dental health. Now, Dr. Villarreal, um, we see a lot of cases where people have um, uh, problems with their teeth after they become vegan or vegetarian. I, I know I certainly had dental problems uh, soon after I became vegetarian within a year. Um, is, is this a common problem? And also, like, we notice that they have lower phosphorus levels in their hair, for instance. Is this a common problem with uh, vegans and vegetarians? In my practice, I've noticed there's a huge problem in the um, healing phase mm -hmm. of any type of dentistry that we do on them. They take longer to heal. Um, they tend to have more sensitivity mm -hmm. with their teeth. Um, and the enamel just doesn't look as healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I can only speak for myself. Um, you know, my blood type is O positive, so I need to e eat red meat. And I don't really care for red meat, but I know if I don't eat it once or twice a week, I, mm. uh, mentally, I don't feel as, as, as sharp. I've noticed the same thing. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I feel more sluggish. So, you know, it's, I think everybody needs to have some type of fat from, from animals. Mm -hmm. it, it's just in, in, to heal. And now, to, and did to stay Weston active. Price discover the same thing? It's very similar thing. Um, yes, very much so. I don't know much about it, but Western Price was was definitely into that. I know that Dr. Hal Huggins, big big advocate for uh, red meat mm -hmm. and in in the diet. You know, you need those good fats. You need you need that. Same with butter, good butter. Same with eggs. Mm -hmm. You know, eggs and butter have gotten such a bad rap, mm -hmm. right? Right. And you know, you need all that for for healing purposes. Mm -hmm. it, especially, I've seen it in in dentistry. With my patients that have some type of autoimmune disease, um, you know, the, the ones that aren't vegan or vegetarian, mm -hmm. you know, it's just from what I've noticed in my practice um, that they heal better. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, and some of the things we've learned now about like diet is, is that when you have uh, an animal uh, based food, you have, or fish, you have the minerals and the vitamins are there with the fats and the oils and the proteins in this matrix mm -hmm. that is completely bioavailable. In a very different way, say, in, for instance, than in just plants by themselves. Although they'll say, you know, okay, I remember, I, I remember lecturing about pro-vegetarianism and saying, look, there's plenty of protein and beans and rice and, you know, these other lentils and so forth. But is there really? I mean, uh, is it, th there seems to be a different quality to that. And and as we know, Western Price studied all these different cultures throughout the yes. world, mm -hmm. and he concluded the he said the healthiest vegetarian culture was the northern Punjabi uh, people, I believe. Hmm. But then he said the Polynesian people were the healthiest people he could find in the world, and they weren't vegetarian. He, in fact, he said he couldn't find one healthy vegetarian you know culture 
ever. And that was in the early 1900s when the yeah. soils were much more rich than they are now. Yeah, so think of, think about that now. I mean, you have all these vegetarians and vegans, and our soils are so depleted. Mm -hmm. Even if you go and raise your own vegetables or um, you, you buy organic or you go to these farmer's markets, mm -hmm. what about the soil? Mm -hmm. No one really thinks about the soil and Interesting, all yeah. the toxins that are in the soil. Because, you know, our, our teeth are made up this, of the same thing about bones, like the... Uh, you know, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, boron, strontium. And a lot of people think, well, all you have to do is get those minerals in your body. But it seems like it's a lot more complex than that. Many people like, you know, these metabolic typing uh, doctors have determined that it's actually more a function of our endocrine and organ systems. Now, can you talk a little bit about that, how, how these, uh, the German, Germanic schools of dentistry uh, and together with the Chinese and I think was it the French as well that showed the correlation between the teeth and the organs and so forth? Yeah, um, that again was uh, the one that we learned it from was a German scientist by the name of Vol in the 50s. And um, they have found that um, whether there's decay, whether there's, well, let's, let's go, let's, let's touch periodontal disease or gum disease, okay? We call it the silent killer. Because by the time the patient comes to us with pain because of gum disease, it's advanced. Okay, and it's, it's so advanced that they're going to lose teeth. Okay, so the we'll move away a little bit from biological holistic dentistry and just go streamline with the ADA and the AMA. They understand that gum disease directly affects the heart. You know, it 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 um, makes diabetes worse. It causes an array of different problems because all that bacteria is going into the bloodstream and going everywhere in the body. Hmm. So they understand that. I read years ago in, in the paper where new, uh, Blue, I think it was Blue Cross or one of those big big uh, insurance companies asking their physicians to please check in their patient's mouth to see if they had any signs of gum disease. Because most people will go get their, their physical done once a year, but who wants to go to the dentist, you know? Every time, you know, people sit in the dental chair, what do they do? You know, they get all nervous, right? right. So they're, they're, they tend to go more for their physicals. So the insurance company was asking the physician to look in their mouth, because, not because they cared about the patient, but if they had gum disease, any signs of gum disease, they would ask the physician to at, tell them to go see their dentist for a cleaning. The only reason is because five years down the road, they didn't want to fork out all this money to deal with their, their heart problems hmm. because of that. So... Western medicine's got a little bit going on, knowing and understanding that, you know, something happens here, affects the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what Chinese, Germans, all these other countries did is they understood that if there's a problem with the tooth, it will affect the organs. So let's talk about that because it's a very important subject. I mean, there's so many people who we've heard about, like famous baseball stars, and they drop dead on the field. They're only 26 years old. And people say, oh, my God, how could they, they die so suddenly? Uh, you know, they were perfectly healthy and strong. And then you see a little kind of small article in the sports page like two weeks later saying that he had had dental work.